Today we've got this Swagtron Swagger 5 electric scooter, battery operated, a nice one. It's brand new, right out of the box, won't work. We're gonna fix it. Hey everybody, Dave Johns here with the Grizzly Fun. Today we've got this scooter that for whatever reason ended up being a return. So it ends up being brand new out of the box, but the thing won't operate. It won't stay running and it powers up. The display looks good. The battery indicator says the battery's fully charged. And when you put on the throttle here, it'll, it pulses. So let me show you what that does. So if we go ahead and we turn this guy on, all is well. We're seeing five bars of power, so it's fully charged. We're seeing 00, 0.0 miles per hour in the display. And on this one, we're also seeing this little Bluetooth indicator blinking, which means this scooter has the capability to be linked to a cell phone. And the fact that it's blinking indicates that it's not linked. So that's going to be a step here in a minute. But let me show you what it does, if I can. So this makes sense. One thing before I do that you need to know about these scooters is they have a switch on the brake so that when you put the brake on this switch right here, it's right, right on the end. I can't even get my finger on it because of this little plunger that pushes it. You can see it getting pushed there. That tells the scooter to go off a cruise. So you can put it into a cruise mode and then you don't have to hold the throttle down. If you put this brake on, that switch tells the system, the, con the electric controller for the scooter to turn off the cruise and stop driving the motor. Okay, so that's one thing. If When you're troubleshooting these, you want to take that into account because sometimes that can be not operating properly and it'll obviously cause problems. So that's something that we'll keep in mind while we're try to ride it. And I, this, the throttle here with my right thumb, if I push on that, it goes and then it stopped and it won't go anymore. So then I release it and it, it's just the same. So it does that little bit, just that little stutter, but it won't, it won't go, continue to go. So what that tells me is there's a lot of the electronics here that's working like it's supposed to. The motor's moving, the battery's got charge, it's turning on the controller, the electronics are coming up so the display is shown, but it just isn't going anywhere. And if, if I had both my hands available here, when you put this on and then I put the brake on, you'll also get that pulsing because that little switch that I just showed you is telling the controller to do something with the cruise control but it's not moving, so it doesn't do anything. This little guy, the normal operation of this scooter does not require you to be linked through Bluetooth, but we're gonna try that out and see if it tells us anything. So let me get my phone. Okay, so I go in, I search for Swagger 5 scooter app, and it comes up there. Swagger 5, um, and it, it says uh, Procom products. Okay, so I'm going to say install. Okay, it's there. So I say open. All of the, the goofiness um, wants access to everything. As all apps do nowadays, allow the Swagger 5 to make and manage phone calls. I don't think so. There's no need. <laughs> Photos, media, file. No, <laughs> deny. <laughs> okay. It kills me. Join the revolution. Go further. Da, 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 da. It'll go. It speeds up to 18 miles per hour on the 250 watt motor. Okay, so it wants you to register and log in, but I don't. I haven't registered before, so I'll have to log in here. Bad news. I, I can't even try it out. Very disappointed. I tried and tried to load the app onto my phone, and it loaded okay. But then to, when you run it, it asks you to register, which no problem, I was gonna do that. And it asks for an email address and then it has a send button so that they can send you a code. And once you get that code in your email, you then enter that into the app 
and it along with a password and then you have a login ID and you can use the app at that point. Well, it turns out I tried and tried pressing the send button. I used multiple email addresses. I used the Wi-Fi here at the lab. I used my cell connect for data and I used my Wi-Fi at home. Never got an email, never got an ID to a code to type in, never got a response. You can't use the app if you're not logged in and registered. So I gave up on that. But I also was thinking maybe this isn't, since this scooter is brand new, it's, it's a return. So, and you can tell when you look at it, it's not been used hardly at all. So to think that the software was bad right off the bat out of the box seems kind of fishy to me. My theory now is maybe we don't need the app. Maybe all we need to do is open this baby up and change power. Well, basically cycle power. I don't have a reset button, but the one thing to keep in mind with respect to battery operated battery power devices like this, especially that have the button on the, the front, the power, the on off button, the microcontroller that's on the control printed circuit board is always looking at that button. And the minute that it's pressed, things power up. Well, in order for it to detect that that button was pressed, it's got to be on. It's got to have power supplied to it. And when you turn it off, you're not resetting the processor or turning off 100% of the power to the whole set of electronics. You're just powering it down. So it's not going to turn on a motor. It's not going to show the display. It's not going to have any of that kind of features powered up but that controller board is still going to be powered up. So my theory right now is, and my task right now is, we want to disconnect the battery. We want to disconnect all of the power from the electronics and see if a hard reset, power down, power back on, of all of the electronics sets the processor back to normal. Okay. This guy comes off. It does have a gasket. Be careful with that guy. You wanna make sure you keep that intact all the way around here so that it seals back up when we're done. And you basically have the very large battery pack. This guy says that it is 37 volts DC, uh, 6.0 amp hours, 222 watt hours. It's a model GW smart lithium ion battery pack. Okay. And then you've got your charger here and brushless DC controller. Oh, well, it does say that this is the controller. So you would have this controller. I like the fact that this has been made more robust than previous models. Previous models, you opened this up and you could see printed circuit board right here. It wasn't in another enclosure, so this is a, an improved design. But it has these connectors that come directly off of the battery right here. So we have the, looks like a main power connector here. That's a heavier gauge wires. And then this one, this one goes to the charger connector here on the side. These smaller wires then are the wires that go into have this guy in a charge mode and then these two motor or two wires come out for everything else that's being powered in the scooter so lots of connectors and i don't really have anything here that i can get my meter on and test voltages i could start unplugging stuff that goes up into the the handlebar and the shaft that goes up to the handlebar, but I don't think I want to do that. And obviously part of that is, you know, one of them that goes to the, the drive motor that's in the front wheel. It's only the front wheel that's driven. Yeah. So the motor for the scooter is in the front wheel. 
which doesn't really matter. So I am going to power up. So I'll press the power button here. So I'm showing full bars of battery charge. And then it has the, the mileage indicators there. And I'm going to turn that. That's max on. And you see I only get that little teeny bit of power. It just makes it start. And that's it. And again, the theory was... Okay, the theory was the cruise control wasn't operating properly and the minute that it senses power going out to the motor it then turns power off to the motor now we're powered off and i'm going to undo this main power connector that goes to the battery so we're disconnected here now and just as a sanity check we could do a quick voltage measurement on the battery. So this is going to be DC and we have 41 volts and very solid as you totally expect off of a battery. So battery looks good and if you check the connector that goes off to the rest of the scooter, you should have zero. This is with the battery unplugged. I saw a little bit of a flicker there from the light, but it shouldn't turn on because it's disconnected. There's no power at all. Wait, let's see if our, the, our simplest case scenario here pans out. You hear a little bit of a spark there when you plug it back together and that's understandable so everything's charging back up powering back up so again we'll power up it's like normal okay everything comes back the way that it was before now when i hit the throttle oh, same thing No simple fix that way. Okay, well, we'll go to plan C. What is next? If I change speed here, go to two, same thing. If you go to three, A one three exactly the same and if I if I go all the way full throttle or if I go really slow it doesn't matter there's just barely anything does the same thing so it's doing that the minute that it starts turning. Okay, time to think of alternative failure mode theories. One could be, I mean, we're still back to where we, we don't have a way to prove out software. So it could easily still be a software issue, but uh, something that um, could be a problem is if the sensor that tells the controller board that the, the, the motor's turning the wheel, that it's actually turning, if, if it's either bad or if it's disconnected somehow, the board could be expecting, since it's sending power, the board could be expecting a certain amount of movement from the, the wheel with the motor and it's not getting it. And so it could go into a def uh, uh, kind of a default operating mode where if that sensor is not in place, it's not functioning, that it immediately shuts down. That's one scenario. That is one that could be fairly 
easy. I mean, certainly if there, if there is a, a connector issue, we could figure it out that way. I'm going to disconnect power so the battery's not connected. And I'm going to go through each one of these connectors. This is the, the battery, the charge. Everything at this point looks proper. The only thing, the only thing you could say at this point is the the controller itself could be bad. We we don't have a way to eliminate that as a possibility. Wow, that was interesting. You notice that it's it was like in one spot there. It, if you put it in a particular spot, it wouldn't react at all. It was like a dead spot. Right there. That's all in that spot. That's all I get out of it. Wow. In that spot, it go if you're in that spot doesn't go you know this really looks like a sensor issue one scenario here would be that the controller is always looking for feedback to make sure that it knows what the what the motor is telling the wheel to do and in other scooters and I, I'm not sure how this I'll have to look at the operating instructions for this one my other scooters the go track scooters you've got to push to get the the motor to be driven if you if you just stand on it and push down on the throttle it'll just sit there it won't move and they do that from a safety point of view that they don't want it to take off unless you're ready to go and one way that you can handle that is make the scooter not do anything until it actually till the person moves it meaning that their foot is on it it's it's in the right position it's doing the right thing to be powered up and if the person doesn't push it it just sits there and doesn't do anything well that's the way this is acting but if i if i put the throttle on and then i push it it doesn't do anything and my guess is At first glance, you look at that and you say, woohoo, I think we're onto something here. Because this guy right here is definitely bare. And let me use this other camera and we will do a better close up. You can see all of this black. And if you look real close, you can see that this yellow wire is bare right there. 
it's been rubbing and it's bare so the inside this the bearing um, this hub here as the wheel this rotates with the wheel so this is going around all the time and it's been rubbing right on there and it's rubbed through them this is beautiful this is exactly as you're troubleshooting something like this this is exactly what you want to find because it's a definitive issue meaning that we know we found a fault there's no no question i'm going to leave this zoomed it's right there and you can see where that wheel has been or the hub it rotates around and the yellow wire has been rubbed off right there and the red wire has been rubbed off right there when I check them in this mode, they aren't shorted out or they, they aren't shorted together because the metal's gone from the hub. When you put the hub back together and it spins a little bit, then these two surfaces short together, bam, it stops running. And my guess is maybe there's enough, a little bit of an imperfection in the, the flatness of that hub. And as it rotates around, there's one spot there where it just stays shorted all the time. And when you get the wheel in that exact spot where it's shorting those two together, the controller automatically says, hey, this is wrong, and it shuts it off. And that's why we had the dead spot. And when you're not in that spot, it's not shorted right then. But as it rotates, it shorts it out as it's turning. So when they tell you it's a software problem, eh, wrong. Here we go. We need to make the wires be at a lower point than they are. So I'm going to, I think if they, if when they routed them, you see this red wire, how it's got a kink in it right here. There's a bend. If they had just bent that so that it was over here underneath of this cable tie, I don't think anything would have happened. And the yellow one, same thing. There's definitely enough slack in both of these. I can get it to move at all down here on the side side you can see how the red the red loops around all over the place so we got a lot of extra wire there and I don't think the yellow may have lost some strands connected but I, there nothing sticking up there and the reds definitely didn't the red's going to be the easiest. I'm going to do it first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to poke it right through this little channel here and have it go underneath of the cable tie right here. And that'll easily be lower than where the wheel is going to rub on it. And it makes it, since I, I know for a fact I've got a lot of extra slack with it, it can go down there and be just fine. And I have some of this capped on tape. If you've never used it, it's pretty cool stuff. It's higher temperature, which here I don't know that that matters at all. It's clear. Well, it's got its tent to it, but it is transparent. You can see through it. And it, it has good stickiness. Now, that piece is huge. So the idea is to get it wrapped around the red here. At that point where the insulation got rubbed and then we'll move this to where it needs to be so first this repair if I can there we go don't know why that was so difficult but it wasn't cooperating so we'll just wrap around the bare part there. And have this guy stick to himself. Hopefully. And that way. I don't have any worries with respect to anything other than the yellow wire that it's bare to. And I don't want the bare areas to ever come in contact with each other so with that covered like it is we'll then move this red wire over here where i think 
it'll do much better. I don't know that the, those tweezers are the best tool for the job. So if I can push that guy over there, ooh, beauty. That's perfect. So right there, you know that you got it down below the level that it was before where it was rubbing, okay? Now, same thing with the yellow. We'll take another little piece of Kapton and it will go around the, the real bad part there. We'll go underneath of the yellow. Start with an edge there. These wires are Teflon, by the way. So they're a higher temperature, higher quality insulation than something like PVC, which is really common. A lot of the particles got wrapped up in that sticky. Hopefully this will stay stuck to itself. Having the sticky go to the sticky definitely helps make that tape stay in place. Okay, so same thing there. Then I want to get a little bit of slack on it if I can up out of here. I'm kind of blind there as far as... Available. If I pull... A little bit on that. Doesn't the yellow doesn't seem to have nearly as much to play with as the red does. So with what's there, push it up into place as well and make it so that it seats down where the other red is. And then this cable tie, which hasn't been moved or disturbed, will now hold them both down where they need to go. And you're below, you know, there's a little scratch on the cable tie right there, but that's up above any of these wires now. So You know, and you see how this guy was so much higher than this level is and was rubbing. But we don't care about that. It's just the nylon um, sheathing that goes around there. I think that fixes it. I think we're golden. Now, one thing when you're doing this kind of thing that you want to make sure of. Also, you can look here. There's nothing on this yellow that's going to pull it make it go somewhere else the red the same way they're pretty much where they are supposed to be and they're they're not going to move anywhere they're going to stay there it it looks like it was just an assembly issue when they very first assembled they didn't route the wires where they were supposed to go and it made it so that the red and the yellow we're up above their spots. There we go. Oops. And that's why they got caught. So, I think we're golden right there. Else to Im improve on it. Okay, so you can see the the yellow comes and, and goes underneath and the red is back in its same spot too. And both of them are underneath of this level of the cable tie and way well, well under this little rub, rubbing area on that nylon sheath. And that it doesn't matter if that flops a little bit and gets rubbed on. So I think we're good. That looks good. Now we will, oh, what I was going to say is one thing you want to make sure of is that they're in place 
and you don't have to do this again. You do not want to tear this apart again. You want to make sure that it's in the spot where it's supposed to be, that it's not going to rub anymore. I think we're good. It was rubbing. And if I can make it come up here, get it in the video there. I don't know if you can see that very well. Right here was that edge. This piece rotates. It is flush. Oh, the, the bearing piece comes out a little bit further than the other. So that's the piece that was rubbing right there. So we're down below that now and everything is down below anything that will rub on there. So this guy will put back in place where it goes. One thing too to keep in mind that we did discover, you can look on this other side, There are no screws here. <laughs> Those are all for show. So do not try to take out these hex heads. They are not screws. They're just dummy for looks. Something to keep in mind. Okay, so that pops back down there. It's interesting that you can spin it and hear it rub. I think that's the little bit of warp that made it so that you only got it to stop at a certain point in rotation, not everywhere all the time. Testing. Okay. All right. What you want to do is make sure that your washer, this washer that's with the nut, this washer goes in between the wheel and this bracket. Okay. It doesn't go up against the nut. It's a spacer. If I can get it to come back. It's a spacer that goes on the inside like that and then you put it down in the slot. So don't forget to do that. Make sure that you do that on both sides. That keeps the, the wheel spaced inside of there. And then the nuts just screw back on and they tighten up against the wheel. Okay, if I tighten these guys up, keep this from falling off the bench. You definitely want to make sure they're tight because you don't want your wheel coming off. One thing they've done is they've, they've sunk the nuts inside of the clips on both sides so that if this did get loose, it wouldn't just automatically pop out. It's going to be held in there with some friction or even more than just friction. It has some structure that it bangs up against. Okay, with that back in place, I want to do a quick check quick test quick check to see if we're successful now you saw the way that it operated before where we had that dead zone and it would only go for a pulse and then the wheel stopped this time here we go power on it beeped Okay, powered up, still full charge. Here's the throttle. Da, 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 da. Oh baby. It says it's going 10.9 miles an hour. 
If I shift the gears, that goes to second gear. It's now second, first, second, third. Now that says 19, 20 miles an hour. Woohoo! Love it when a plan comes together. And then you put the brake on. So even if, see the, and one thing that this does do, the brake isn't on this wheel. Remember, it's only on the back wheel, but they've interlocked it with a switch. When you press the brake, it'll cut out power. So if it's at its max speed there and you apply the brake, bam, turns off power. Oh, you let the brake up. If you've got the throttle on, it'll come back to whatever speed your throttle is set at. That's awesome. Big success. Love it when that happens. So I will, I need to take a video of that. This is a great day, woohoo! Okay, we're tuned, we're dialed, we're, we're back. We're good. And let's go for a ride. Let's see how this baby works. So turn power on. That looks good. So let's go for a ride. So there you have it. Successful repair of a Swagger 5, Swagtron scooter. Definitely the issue was in the wheel. Wires were rubbing, rubbed bare, shorting out, making it so that it pulls. And what I found online was they were suggesting a software upgrade. Give me a break. It had nothing to do with software. I could never yeah. upload the app. I could never use the app. Who cares if the scooter, you don't need the app. So. It's, it was a mechanical fix and, and we solved it. So hopefully that was helpful to you. As always, let's go find some great ideas and make some awesome products. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.